not planning any little trips, are we? No, I know the procedure. Good. Thanks for coming down, Heather. How'd it go? We had a wonderful chat. Yeah, let's leave it at that. Have a good day, love. Good day to you, Commissioner. Good day, Scotty. What's the matter? Are you worried about matching stories? I just don't like taking chances. Have a seat. Listen, I want to tell you something right up front here. I had nothing to do with it. I don't care what Heather or Alice said. I'm innocent. Did I intimate that you weren't? Well, you didn't call me down here to have lunch. You got that right. I have a few questions. Right. Starting with, uh, where was I from 8 to 11? Well, I thought we went through that last night. I'm getting old. Refresh my memory. All right. I had dinner with Susan. We had a fight. We made up. At approximately 9.30, I went to the office to get some work done. I realized that some papers that I needed, Heather had taken home with her. And so you went to Heather's? That's right. It was an important case. Seltzer versus Dean. How long were you there? Until you called. Well, how long was that? Five, ten minutes, an hour, more or less, what? About 15 minutes at the most. The argument did you have? What was it about? It was a misunderstanding over some papers. I heard it was about forgery. Well, sure, that's what uh, Susan told everybody it was. It wasn't? Weird things happened to Susan when she got mad. She made things up. She would twist things around. She would play little tricks. And that is what happened that night. I made her admit that her accusations were just to make me mad. And when she realized that and she faced the truth, she calmed down. And you went to the office. That's right. Look, I know what you're thinking. That had a motive for murder. She could have proven forgery. You'd have gone to jail. Yeah, but I that... told you she wasn't going to do that. If she was, she wouldn't have waited. She would have done it right away. Maybe. Believe me, I would never trade a forgery rap for a murder rap. No. Guess you wouldn't, would you? Is that all? For now. Good. Listen, Commissioner. I'm sure you're going to get your murderer eventually. Goodbye. Bert, this is Robert here. Have you gotten hold of Carlson yet? Good. Listen, I'm not talking to anybody else until I talk to him. was so urgent that I couldn't wait until tonight. I thought we were supposed to just pretend everything was fine. Well, it's not, and I just thought I should warn you about it. That's wonderful. I knew we shouldn't have come to work. Everybody is going to know. What's happened to the police here? Alan, will you please stop acting so guilty? It's not that bad. I just thought I should do a little investigating on my own. What, after that speech this morning? Well, I didn't know about it before. It's Jimmy Lee. You know... He was supposed to be at that meeting last night, but as we all know, he never showed up. Maybe he got there before us. Oh, Alan, why would Jimmy Lee want to kill Susan? Oh, I didn't mean that. I don't think he... Maybe he was just there and he saw the person who did it, that's all. No, no, that's impossible. He spent the night in jail. I am confirmly convinced that he knew nothing about the murder. Then what's the problem? Well, think about it, Alan. He's aware that Susan was going to blackmail us. Now, think what would happen if he decided to take that information to the police. Well, I think it would point right to us. Well, of course. I mean, we have the motive. That coupled with the fact that it was Alan's gun, well, the police are going to have one hell of a time trying to figure out which one of us did it. Yes, I'm a little curious myself. Don't look at me. Well, look, if someone has some information they're not saying, they better just come forward right now. Look, no accusing. Fine, all right, all right. Look, I'm sorry. What about Jimmy Lee? Has he gone to the police yet? No. I asked him uh, to wait a while. He said he would consider it. That chance of that, he can't stand you. Look, Alan, I didn't say it was going to be easy. I only said he would consider it. I could still go either way. We're just going to have to wait and see. And what do we do in the meantime? Well, just stick to our guns, you know. Uh, tell the story and uh, hope for the best. With any kind of luck, this whole thing could pass over us. It would help a lot if they had another suspect. Well, 
What about Scotty? I mean, greed has always been that young man's downfall. I think he'd do anything for money. The same could be said of you, Edward. Or you, Al. Or me, for that matter. It's not at all uncommon for a husband or wife to turn over power of attorney to a spouse, especially when one of the two is incapacitated, as was the case with Mrs. Baldwin. Okay, so at first you weren't suspicious, right? Not at all. In fact, if I hadn't talked to her that day at the bank, I doubt if she ever would have known. All right, now I'm assuming you've already proven forgery here. If I talked to two separate experts, they both agreed it was definitely a forgery. Now, could Susan have forged that document herself to incriminate her husband? I doubt it. Why would she? Let's worry about if she could have first, then we'll sort out a motive. I'll put the experts back on it. All right, now let's go back to when Scotty first brought those papers in. Were you suspicious? More surprised. You see, I remember how adamant Mrs. Baldwin was when she first rescinded the power of attorney. So naturally, I was shocked when he came back in with the new papers. Well, did it occur to you to call Susan? I called her that very day. You sure it was her? Well, at the time, yes, but now it could have been anyone. Tell me. Could you identify the voice on the other end of that phone if you heard it again? Oh, I doubt it. There were too many short answers. Yes, no. All right. When Susan first came to you with a complaint, why didn't you come to the police then? Well, that would have been my first move, but Mrs. Baldwin asked me to wait for a couple of days. I was waiting to hear from her when I got the news. Do you think that Mr. Baldwin could have killed her to keep her from pressing charges? I don't want to get into that. Seems so obvious. Not really. We're talking about forgery here. Murder one, that's a whole new rap. I doubt that he's going to change one for the other. Maybe he didn't consider getting caught. Uh, you said you had some papers for me. Yes, yes. These were in Mrs. Baldwin's safety deposit box. We received authorization to open it this morning. What have we got? Certificate. D. Certificate. Documents. Doc. Aha! Bingo! What is it? The last will and testament of Susan Moore Baldwin. 